How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joe Orchard and welcome to Sunday Skilling. So I think we're on about episode 4, episode 5 now, I'm not too sure entirely. But basically I thought in this episode I would talk a little bit about a few things. Uh, so first of all I thought I would talk about some of my history on RuneScape. Uh, I thought some of you might you know, want to know possibly when I started and you know what I did and how I got to where I am now. Um, as well as this, I thought I would compare 07 to EOC and tell you guys a little bit about that as well, you know, which I prefer and things like that, as obviously I have played both of them. And uh, yeah, as well as that, I thought I'd say a little bit about Legacy Mode. Uh, as some of you may know, there's a Legacy Mode beta coming out fairly soon. Uh, the Jagex did say that they were going to bring it out in the upcoming weeks hopefully so that'd be nice to see that and uh, I'll definitely make a video on that and uh, yeah finally I talk a little bit about what I'm doing at the moment and some videos that I'm going to be bringing out over summer so yeah kicking it off um, when did I start RuneScape so I started RuneScape in 2007 and I started it at school uh, with all my friends as I'm sure a lot of other people did so basically when we had IT lessons or just like free time to go on the computer we were actually able to get on quite a lot of games and uh, it's funny now because basically the primary school that I went to which is from ages 6 to 11 let's say in England uh, so I would have been about 9 at the time they actually let you go on games. Obviously now you're not allowed to get on hardly as many. Like if any of you have like younger brothers or sisters that go to a primary school, you'll probably know that they can't get on like any of the games. And uh, I also know this because I, I actually do voluntary work in the primary school that I used to go to. So it's really strange seeing all the kids playing on the games and stuff. Like a lot of them play things like Happy Wheels and things, which is kind of, it's strange, I don't know. Like I kind of feel a bit sorry for them because like the relationship that I had with everyone in my class when I played RuneScape with them was absolutely immense like it was crazy because it would literally be a room full of computers and we were all playing together and all interacting and PKing so it was absolutely awesome and yeah I had, I had a blast back then it was great I mean I had no idea what I was doing but yeah I had a friend called Paul who um, actually moved away to Korea I knew him for about probably let me think from year six no no sorry from year three to year eight so yeah going five years and uh, yeah he was my best friend for quite a few years and he actually introduced me to the game and uh, yeah I think he'd been playing it for maybe a few months so he sort of knew what he was doing and uh, yeah he said you know Joe look at this game and obviously a lot of other people in my class were playing it and uh, I was like, ah, oh, you know, that looks pretty cool, I'll, I'll try and play it. So we had a computer at home, like a desktop computer, and uh, at the time we had just got broadband, but it was a modem that you had to dial up. So back in the day, obviously, the internet wasn't as good, and it wasn't as accessible. And uh, yeah, you had to dial it up, and you could probably get maybe two hours of connection, but it was terrible, like, it was a really bad connection. Um, and you'd DC all the time and stuff, you know. I could probably move, like, four squares before I lagged, so... Yeah, it, was, uh, it wasn't too good for playing RS, but, you know, I'd, I'd play my two hours a day and, you know, get as much done as I could. But, uh, yeah, I mean, back in the day, you know, I did what everyone did, you know, went and killed chickens and stuff and died at Stronghold. Um, I, like, obviously, my friend was, you know, a fair bit better than me and actually knew what he was doing somewhat. And uh, he'd actually got a set of mithril armor for me. And he was like, oh, you know, Joe, here's some Mithril Armor. So I went and trained my defense to 20, you know, got my Mithril Armor. And, you know, I, he gave it to me and I was like, oh, you know, cheers, dude. It's awesome. Started wearing my myth, you know, walking around, like, going up to guys and Dragon, like, look, I got Mithril Armor. And uh, some guy had come up to me and, you know, Black Arm was kind of like, I don't know, I don't know why. Uh, I think it's because even now it's not as easy to get as obviously like Myth and things like that. But Black Armor seemed kind of rare because it wasn't as accessible, I don't think. And uh, yeah, some guy came up to me with black armor, and he was like, "Oh, you know, dude, can I uh, can I swap you my mithril? Ar uh, can I swap your mithril armor for my black armor?" I was like, "Yeah, dude, you know, black armor is awesome." So I quickly, you know, traded in the mithril armor for the black armor. You know, went up to my friend, and I was like, "Dude, you know, look at what I got." And he was like, "You just swapped it for some worse armor." I was like, "Oh, did I do something wrong? Like, oh, I miss being a noob so much. It was great." But um, yeah, no, I'm actually really glad that they did bring out a 27, uh, 2007 version because obviously, you know, we didn't have anything to play on that was had the ability to, you know, PK on because when ESC came out, PKing basically just died, you know. I mean, PKing is a huge part of the game. It's basically my motivation to play. And uh, yeah, I do enjoy the community aspect of it and, you know, socializing with people and stuff like that. But in terms of actual gameplay, PKing is my biggest motivation and it's the thing I enjoy most. Um, I do also enjoy staking quite a lot. Back in the 
2012 probably, yeah, back in the pre-OC days I did stake a little bit. Um, I actually ended up staking quite a lot more in EOC because that was one of the enjoyable things that you could do. Uh, one PKing was gone, but yeah, obviously they brought out the 27 version. Uh, 2007 version, can't freaking say it. And uh, yeah, that was that was a really good move by Jagex, I think, but it did kind of divide the community up a little bit. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it brought back quite a lot of people as well, so that was nice to see. But yeah, I am really glad they brought out this. And uh, yeah, I mean, compared to pre-EOC, um, 2007 does have its advantages as well as disadvantages. Um, I would say, well, basically, it has disadvantages, but it has polls, which is what pre-EOC didn't have. And I think if Jagex polled all the updates, I mean, I know they polled the EOC, but the voting was kind of, I don't know, it was a bit, it was a bit corrupt. Like, the questions and the way they phrased them, and it just, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't in the players' interests, I don't think. I think they decided that that was the update that they were going to do, and, you know, that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not annoyed that EOC came out because obviously we do have a version that we can play with PKN and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I'm glad that they do polling on 2007 because obviously then it lets the players choose what updates they want, and I think that's really good because I think in the past before you know Jagex has made some mistakes. Um, it's okay to admit your mistakes, you know, because they have rectified some of them and they have also included a lot of good updates. But I think, yeah, they have they have done updates that obviously the players haven't been unha uh, haven't been happy with, and uh, obviously there's been like a lot of riots and things like that. So uh, yeah, sometimes you know I think it's I think it's a wise move to do polling because then you know if the majority of the players don't want the update, if you make it, it's going to annoy people. So that's, you might as well just poll it. It doesn't take long, and you can you know include the updates that you want. But yeah, I would say that 07 is a bit more of a grind than pre OC because obviously you know there's not as it's not as easy to access things on 07, just things like getting around, you know, obviously in EOC you have lodestones that you can teleport around for free as much as you want. Uh, I think like, you know, in 07 they don't even have the removal of the 20 minute wait time, so you know, when you home teleport you have to wait 20 minutes. Um, I think they should poll that, I'm surprised they haven't polled it yet to be honest, but yeah, that would be quite nice to see. But um, yeah, the final thing that I would say about 07 compared to EOC, it wasn't a big problem for me back in the day, but definitely on 07 now as a void peeker is the fact that you can loot items if you couldn't reloot void i would not be making this build like the fact that you can reloot torso void fire cape all that is so nice because you know even things like fire cape some people really struggle with and you're never going to pk with it if you die and not uh, keep it when you die so yeah i think that's definitely a really good advantage of 07 but um yeah in terms of legacy mode what would i do if legacy mode came out well First off, I'm going to say it's not going to be the same as pre-OC. They've said that it's going to be, it's not going to be a separate server as well, by the way, I should note. Um, it is going to be just sort of like an add-on to EOC. So it's going to be a sort of modern pre-EOC in the style of EOC, but you're going to be able to do the old combat, obviously. Um, I'm not sure, they're going to bring out a beta pretty soon, as I said. Um, and I'm not sure if they're going to work on the animations, because there was a live stream a little while ago with, you know, people like James from Rune Shark and Simon. And they were displaying the, uh, uh, the legacy mode and you know people were obviously saying what they thought about it but yeah they're gonna bring out a poll pretty soon but the animations were slightly strange because they updated them for the EOC so a lot of people were complaining about the animations and uh, just little tweaks but obviously it's only in the you know beta so it's <laughs> you know well when the beta comes out for the players it's gonna be open for people to say what they want to say and you know they'll take into account all people's ideas and try and make it as good as they think they can possibly make it um, hopefully they do take into consideration what everyone says and uh, yeah hopefully it'll bring back some people to the game and you know maybe make PK an enjoyable again for people in EOC but uh, yeah if they do make it and it is good I'm gonna be possibly hybriding uh, I can probably get access to a max account if not I could make my own it probably wouldn't take that long to be honest in EOC uh, so I would either make a hybrid or a pure or a free to play PK and um, back in the day I did a lot of free to play PK and I did really enjoy that so yeah, those are probably some of the things that I would do. But yeah, on a final note, guys, um, I have got three days left of college, which is beautiful. And uh, yeah, I'm currently working on 94 Mage. I am, let me see, I'm 85k off the next level. So that's not bad. 89 coming up pretty soon. And uh, yeah, obviously I've got a complete Lunas and possibly Desert Treasure. I don't know if I need Vengeance and Barrage. I think I'll probably just keep Vengeance for now. 
Um, well, obviously I've got to get it first, but yeah, I don't think I'll rush into doing Desert Treasure soon. Um, I'll, well, I'm thinking of making a hybrid um, after Void PKN. Uh, I'll see how Void PKN goes, you know, I'll definitely, I'll be busting out loads of live streams and, you know, PK commentary, so that should be pretty good and uh, hopefully enjoyable to watch. But yeah, obviously I did say in my previous video that they're going to be releasing quite a few new Clue Scroll rewards. Uh, you can click that at the end of this video if you haven't seen that already. Uh, so I am going to be doing a Clue Scroll marathon. The rewards should be coming out soon, hopefully in the next week I'm going to say, uh, sort of mid-June. So yeah, they look pretty awesome actually, so go and check that out if you haven't already seen the video. I'll put a link in the description as well. But uh, yeah, I'm also going to do a skilling marathon, which is going to be a different skill every day for five days of the week. So yeah, that should be pretty interesting, and yeah, I'll have to have a little think about what skills I'm going to train. Hopefully I'll train some of them that I might need for, you know, quest requirements and stuff like that. But yeah, that should be pretty enjoyable. And uh, yeah, we'll see how much progress I can make. But yeah, that's going to come to the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Let's show you my stats quickly. There you go. And uh, yeah, I'm going to update my stats pretty soon. I'll put a progress video out for you guys to see. But uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to leave a like. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for 100 subscribers as well. It's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon.